Hi, Mr. Heffernan here, and this is a short video on aircraft navigation using trigonometry and vectors. Okay, so a few things you should know. Uh, first of all, uh, the velocity of the plane relative to the air. So this is the airspeed of the plane. So uh, how fast would the plane go on a windless day? Or what would the, um, the air tunnel testing be? Uh, heading, the direction the plane is pointing. Okay, so uh, which way is the the pilot pointing the plane, ignoring the wind. Okay, then you got the velocity of the air to the ground. So this is the, uh, what is the wind doing? How fast is it blowing and which direction? And then finally, when you combine those two vectors, those two uh, velocities, you're going to get the overall velocity of your plane. And this is the velocity of the plane compared to the ground. And so uh, the speed compared to the ground is called ground speed. So if you did uh, hit a stationary object, what would you hit it at? And tracking is the direction the plane's moving according to a radar tracking station. So which way is the plane shadow moving on the ground? Okay, so the formula for calculating the uh, overall velocity is we're just going to use this vector formula right here. So the velocity of the plane with respect to the ground is equal to the velocity of the plane relative to the air plus the velocity of the air compared to the ground. So you can say with respect to, relative to, or compared to. Okay, so here's a quick, easy 1D example, one-dimensional. So we're going to have a headwind. So an African swallow has an airspeed of 11 meters per second east, and a light breeze of 5 meters per second west provides a headwind. So the wind is blowing towards the, uh, towards the African swallow. Determine the ground speed of the bird. So this is 1D, so it's pretty easy. It's just relative velocity, so 11 subtract 5 is 6. So the resultant velocity is 6 meters per second east. So this bird, uh, although it is trying to fly at 11 meters per second, it's being blown back at 5, so it only results that it's moving at 6 meters per second compared to the ground. Okay, then we got a tailwind instead. So here we got a European swallow. It's got an airspeed of 24 miles per hour east, and a gale force breeze blows at 42 miles per hour east, providing a tailwind. Determine the ground speed of the bird. So this is also one dimensional, 1D. So we got 24 plus 42 is 66. So the result is 66 miles per hour east. So this bird here, when it tries to fly at 24 miles per hour, it's going to get blown at 42. And altogether, it's going to go flying forward at a crazy speed of 66 miles per hour. Pretty dangerous for a bird. Okay, so now we're going to do some two-dimensional examples. So here's a nice right-angle triangle, two-dimensional right-angle triangle. So here we've got uh, like a World War II fighter plane, a piston engine plane. And it's flying north at 120 kilometers per hour. Oops, there's a little typo, north. Okay. The wind is blowing to the east at 50 kilometers per hour. So this plane, every time it moves north, it's also going to move to the east. So when you add these two vectors together, the red one and the blue one, we're going to get this dashed green one as the result. So to find this one, this is easy. Anytime you do a right angle triangle, you're going to use Pythagorean theorem. So here we've got the, uh, the hypotenuse squared equals the um, opposite, so the adjacent squared plus the opposite squared. And so we get uh, VPG squared equal, uh, equals 120 squared plus 50 squared. And altogether that works out to 130 kilometers per hour. So you may be wondering about these absolute value signs. When you want to know the magnitude of a vector, the grammatically correct way of writing it is to write absolute value signs on either side of your uh, vector symbol which means you're looking for the number, but not the direction. Okay, if you don't want to do that, that's fine. Okay, so over here, we're going to find the direction finally. So the opposite side is the wind, 50, and the adjacent side is the plane speed, 120. And so when we um, divide that and go shift tan or find the inverse tan, we get 22.6 degrees. So altogether, we got our magnitude, 130 kilometers per hour, and we've got our, our uh, direction, 22.6. So the plane is going to get deflected to a direction of north 22.6 degrees east, and it's going to be sped up a little bit to 130 kilometers per hour. So now we're going to get to a tricky, difficult question here. This is a non-right angle triangle. Okay, so we have a jet plane traveling at 1,200 kilometers per hour northeast. If it says northeast, it means 45 degrees. Okay, it has to be 45 degrees. And we got a wind blowing, and the wind is blowing. This is a hurricane force wind, very strong. 
240 kilometers per hour east, 30 degrees south. So we just want to find out, hey, what's the uh, result on this um, this jet plane here? Which direction is it going to go and how fast? Okay, so the uh, first step to do a question like this is to uh, use the box trick, as I call it. So we're going to find one of the vertices of the triangle, and that's going to be where one of our vertices is for the rectangle. We're going to draw a rectangle around the triangle. So it's going to be inscribed inside the rectangle. And... Um, what we're going to try to do is find this angle up here, which is across from the unknown side. Okay, so I'll show that in a few steps. So the first step, if this is a 45 degree angle, and we have a right angle triangle here, then this is also 45 degrees. Over here, we have a 30 degree angle. So if I just draw a right angle like this, there we go. Then second, I know this is a 60 degree angle. Third, if I draw another right angle right here, and this is 45, then I know I need another 45 to add up to 90. And there we go. So I've got enough information to get this angle now. So this angle is 105 degrees, and it's directly across from the unknown side. So that's your first step. Always find the angle across from your unknown side. Second step. Now that you have enough information, use the law of cosines to find the magnitude of the unknown side. So um, here we go. The uh, unknown side squared is equal to the uh, plane in the air squared plus the uh, wind squared. Subtract two times the plane in the air, the wind, cos theta. So we're going to fill it in. 1200 squared plus 240 squared. Subtract two times 1200 times 240 times the cos of 105. So uh, calculate that, square root both sides, and you get this is the magnitude, 1,283.23 kilometers per hour. Don't round off too much because you need a lot of digits to get a good answer for your angle. Okay, so the third step is to find the unknown angle where you started your picture. So we drew our picture starting off here in the corner. So this is the angle that we're actually interested in. So which direction, uh, how much is the plane going to get blown off course? That's the angle we're looking for right here. So this angle is across from the 240. And the angle we knew, 105, is across from the previous answer, 1283.23. So we're going to use the law of sines for that. So the law of sines is find the angle, sine of the angle across um, over the, the side across from it, equals the sine of another angle divided by the side across from that. Okay, then we're just going to work through some a uh, little bit of algebra here, and we get an angle of 10.4 degrees. Okay, finally, we just have to find an actual direction now. So um, if you go up the side of the rectangle, that's north. So we're going to come over 45 degrees, another 10.4 degrees. So altogether, that's 55.4 degrees. So the direction is north 55.4 degrees east. So now we can round off our answers a little bit. So the velocity of the plane compared to the ground is 1,283 kilometers per hour. So the wind is going to speed it up by 83 kilometers per hour. And instead of traveling at a 45 degree angle, it's going to go north 55.4 degrees east. So the plane is deflected east by 10.4 degrees. And that's it. So in summary, heading and airspeed. Heading is the direction the pilot points the plane. And speed is provide, airspeed is provided by the engines, the propulsion system. Uh, tracking is the direction your plane is traveling according to a radar station. So how is it actually moving compared to the ground? And ground speed is your overall speed, uh, the engines plus the wind combined. And you may notice this is very similar to solving displacement questions. So if you can solve displacement questions, same math to solve aircraft navigation questions. So I hope this has been useful and uh, good luck with your questions. Thank you.